All right, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Dr. Wanda, and I am seated with a special guest today. His name is Dr. Michael Tate. Did I say it right? Exactly. All right, always correct me because I am learning that um, Ghanaian words, a lot of them have punch. You have to punch <laughs> the word, it, you know, and I'm always lazy with my mouth. In any case, um, Michael is an herbal doctor. What's your title exactly? Um, so currently we use medical herbalist. Medical herbalist. Okay, and what 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 is the difference between being a community herbalist or you know exactly. as as opposed to a medical yep. herbalist? So with the medical herbalist, you go through training, just as um, any medical doctor would go through. Mm. The difference in your training is that you are trained with. Um, uh, to prescribe herbal medicines. Mm. But the training, which is anatomy, clinical medicine, physiology, microbiology, pathology, clinical training, all the training any medical doctor will go through, you will surely go through. Okay. But in your pharmacology, that is where you actually master the acts of herbs. Okay, more. in the pharmacology, exactly. you actually master the art. Of herbs. herbs. So oh. that's quite different from the normal herbalist out. Okay. Who doesn't really go through mm. much training. Okay. So, training meaning school. Exactly. And exactly. so that's medical school. And you named a couple of areas. Um, say train, it. Yeah. So um, anatomy. Yeah. Anatomy. Physiology. Physiology. Microbiology, microbiology, biochemistry, biochemistry, clinical medicine, clinical medicine, pathology. Oh, that pathology! It's, it's, yeah, it's quite a number. It's a lot. Of, yes. So, um, what we gonna say is the good doctor is an expert. Okay, <laughs> he is. He is. He is. He is a, a master of his craft so far. Exactly. So this is a growing journey, right? Sure, sure, yeah, sure. it's a growing journey. All right. Well, we're building for a health fair. I have a. Um, beautiful, beautiful friend in the U.S. who wants to pick up where I left off in Bologna. I had a health fair there in 2019, and by the end of it, what we discovered was the biggest issue in that community was high blood pressure. So we did um, screen for uh, hepatitis B, and we we did give a shot. If, you know, they did get the vaccination for that. Um, we did screen for diabetes. We did screen for malaria. But at the end of the day, once the, the doctors and the, the technicians looked at everything, we learned that Lalonia has a blood pressure problem. Mm -hmm. It is a salt harvesting community. So not only are they living among salt, it's in the air, it's in the skin, they're eating it. So we could see how it's that would be a problem. Good. And then um, we did meet several of them that had had strokes. Mm -hmm. And some people at the actual health fair we had to send them to the doctor because they were already prepared. You know, they didn't even know they were close to stroking. So, uh, Dr. Lassay is beginning to prepare her team. I got the blessing through my niece, through marriage, Susie, to, and she shared with me that Dr. Michael Tate, she said she knew someone who um, knew something about herbs because we both wanted to approach this with medicine that was culturally friendly and um, to provide the medicine that was in a format that they're most likely to take and feel comfortable with and so that's how I came to know mm -hmm. the doctor so you hear about high blood pressure in this village and you are uh, working with herbs what what how would you treat that what are some of the things that you think would be good for this health thing okay so first since we're looking at something that's um, it's more culturally friendly. Uh, would have to do a lot of education on dieting. Mm -hmm. That is one side to uh, uh, more of preventive. Mm -hmm. Now to the medical aspect. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Ain't no more. Mm -hmm. You know, the Nans like they diet, mm -hmm. and they like they salty fish. Exactly. They like that. You understand? They, they, they. So how, knowing how proud you are of your cuisine and. Mm -hmm how um, much, even even as new restaurants and things come, Ghanaians are resistors. They, exactly. they, okay, how do you get them to not do, not use some of those methods? So you realize that quite a number of people are ignorant about mm. their dieting. All they 
do is let me enjoy what I used to enjoy. Right. Without really thinking about the health consequences that comes with it. So with that, we'll have to inform them, educate them, let them understand that even in eating, you don't just eat, but you eat for something. It okay. to take care of your body. Okay. So in that case, when they really understand that, then when we are educating them to transform mm. from late night eating, and quite a number of times, to, it's not necessarily what they eat, but the timing of eating them. Mm, I had even thought about room. that. You're right. Exactly. You're right. So the timing of eating them, the lifestyle um, or bad lifestyle that is associated with their dieting. Mm -hmm. So in Ghana here, you have quite a number of people taking in a lot of heavy food. Most of our foods are heavy. It is excellent. But after taking um, such foods, you don't immediately give your body rest. You need to stay awake for some time okay. for the body to have time to digest. Mm -hmm. So knowing those things, because if you don't do all that, you then have a lot of pressure on the system and mm -hmm. all that has impacts on pressure, sugar, okay. issues. So it's a whole lot of education that we we'll have to start with and then in transforming them. So we maintain the cuisine, but the timing of eating and how you make your preparation would we'll have to vary but still maintain the taste of what um, okay. you have. Okay, because I was going to say, Livia, I know he's not married to a Ghanaian. I don't care what I introduce, he is going to go get his king cat. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was the other point you were going to make before I interrupted you? Okay, so with that, then would to the um, treatment aspect, mm -hmm. we have a lot of herbs in Ghana that are very good for um, hypertension okay um, I'll just make a mention of some few common ones that people really know okay first in Ghana one of the med um, herbal that is good for hypertension is in the local we call it Percocet oh yes yes, yes. and mo but, yes uh, their scientific name is Tetraplura Tetraptera Mm. Okay, <laughs> and, and and this doctor is not getting ready to try to mimic that doctor. Okay, so with a bracket, say, um, you have them, you can have, you can prepare the decoction of it. So if you have about five mm -hmm. um, fruits of bracket, with it, etc., um, and then you'd boil it in about a liter okay. of water and you take it either 25 meals in the morning, in the evening. Over a period of a week, it's really going to help with hypertension with any heart condition. And that's really embedded in y'all diet because I've seen it. I, one, I used to drink when I came here and my blood pressure was high. I actually drunk it as water. Wow. I would just slice it, have it sliced and put it in a bottle of water exactly. and let it soak overnight and drink it. Exactly. Um, but it's in your soap alone. Yes, some it's, added to it. Yeah, somebody, so I've tasted it in your Sorbolo, and I've tasted it in a few of your, did like, um, soups. Soup, soup. soups yeah. Yes. Well, so, if you're already eating it, you're asking people to use it strategically then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, Percocet, what else? So, we have Percocet, and then also we have a beetroot. Beetroot. Yes. Um... Now, it's I had my me. husband mix it with pineapple. Exactly. Okay. So, these are medicinal herbs. Oh, wow. That can be used in everyday dieting, fruits, juice making, and they really help in reducing. Give us a third one. So, we have Percocet beetroot. Give me just one more. So, I got one that I know, but I want to see what the doctor knows. <laughs> so, um, from that also, we also have um, a garlic. That's the one. So that's the one. I had you, your garlic bitters. Exactly. So that that also helps with um, with pressure okay. and heart conditions, heart related. Conditions. How much garlic do you need to consume, and in what format do you need to get that blood pressure down? Okay. So you can have garlic. Um, this time are not cooked. It shouldn't be really cooked. 
Oh, because you don't want to cook off the medicine. Exactly. Okay. There's um, the ingredient in there we call allicin. Okay. So the more you cook them or um, expose it to heat, okay. you reduce the medicinal power of barley. Okay. So to prepare it, you can add it to your water like how we do the Prekeset. Okay. Or you can also make a preparation of it with bill leaves. Oh, with bay leaves? Yes. Bill leaves really? is actually good for um, uh, high sugar level, high, hyperglycemia, mm -hmm. that's diabetes. So having it together with um, garlic really helps. Or you can also cut the slice of garlic after your dish, you have your rice with your stew, mm -hmm. then you slice the garlic mm -hmm. on it. So you want it to be where you can chew it exactly. and still have it fresh, but not so much where you repel people. Because garlic, like onion, does have a scent that people might not want their mouth to smell like. That is true, yeah. that is true. But you just taught me something, to so just have me a little, you know, fresh one and just yeah. kind of sprinkle it on my meal toward the exactly. end. Exactly. Wow. And if you are also, um, uh, maybe you want to use it in your stew, it should be one of the last things you do. Okay. So that it wouldn't be exposed to excess heat. But doctor, you know what you're teaching me? That we in the West have been overcooking our gar our garlic. Exactly. We, we're overcooking it. So we then lose you then lose the medicinal power. Wow. We did it. So what are your thoughts of the the dried garlic or the garlic seasoning? Do they have any sort of real? Uh, effectiveness or are they just okay they just I, give us flavor I, I don't i i don't think we have that hypertensive so look we've been up here just eating and enjoying <laughs> and missing out on the medicine so the, what i'm getting from you is we need to have a little bit of raw to it the whole meal don't have to have a raw but we should be exposed to a little bit of this exactly. raw form if exactly. the issue is blood pressure exactly yeah wow exactly. but just using it as a seasoner it's for to enhance the taste of the food mm -hmm. but not for its medicinal properties well so i was excited about you too because you came with some amazing credentials um mm -hmm. the, the good doctor has done village work where, is, where are some of the villages that you've gone and actually worked with the people okay so um i started in 2015 in central region we have a place we call don Finso. So it was one of the places I started um, medical outreach in villages there. Mm -hmm. And then also being a Christian, I am attached to this missionary group. Mm -hmm. So I mostly head the medical team. Okay. So if you go to the middle bit within Kumasi, you have a place like New Kufuribia, okay. Tonso, mm -hmm. and other places. It's been a while, I've forgotten. Then in the north too, I've been to places like um, Dusie, Mm -hmm. to Da Mongo, mm -hmm. those are some few places I've been to the north, which are typical villages. And the reason I, I share that is because, you know, even though these are different villages, they're, they're, you know, they're all probably harvesting and working on different things. Exactly. The, the term that he used, typical village, means that you're going to find a lot of the same mindset exactly. and the same sort of um, dis environment. Yeah. yeah. So the challenge is kind of are the same if you're a medical team going trying to treat them in terms of communicating doing good outreach help let allowing people to be comfortable with the methods and the things that you're doing with them um where it doesn't where people don't feel threatened uh and and you don't leave with offense so yeah i i love that he had tremendous uh for me you know tremendous uh village work that he had village outreach what else have you done that says, listen, I can, I should be a part of this this next um, effort to treat the Lalonia village? Because we're going to keep calling you. This, this is the reason I'm asking. We're going to keep calling. <laughs> That's true. So um, aside, um, the, in relation to the outreach, medical outreach. Or just in general, like what, what makes you qualified? Because you're looking at them, you know, okay, okay, yeah, okay, what okay, makes them okay, qualified okay, to be okay. on this team? Okay, so um, I generally love to help people okay. and um, going through the philanthropic work or working or watching your videos with other places, I'm really excited and I really want to be part of the team okay. to share my That's knowledge. You want. you want people that want to be a part of the team, <laughs> want to share the knowledge. I love things that impact society, that yeah. brings meaning 
out of people's lives, that helps people to um, see their potential, that helps people, educates people mm -hmm. to help them out of their um, predicaments. And we are in some predicaments with health. Exactly. Now, listen, I'm in Ghana. Um, besides my marriage, I came because I said, this is the Garden of Eden. If nothing else, if you come to Ghana, this you can find holy basil, fresh garlic, fresh ginger. Um, you can find um, uh, hibiscus flowers. You can find, yeah. it, there's, there's just so many mm -hmm. herbs and roots and barks and berries that, um, in fact, I have a, a product here now, um, turkey berry exactly. with ginger powder. Yeah. And I got this not for, uh, for really for immunity, I got it because of the iron. Okay. I felt like I was dragging. Um, it's actually, it's, it's one of the locally um, um, hematenics. Is it? That is, um, enhances um, blood supply. So yeah. it's really good for anemia. Down here in, um, in Ghana, where you have people with anemia conditions, even in pregnancy. Why is it berries. so heavy with you all? Why is anemia so heavy with you all? Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's with all, but you have quite a number of people. Okay, with but that why, why is it, why, with, with access to such rich organic food, and, and such uh, all, all that good fish because you guys are, are very exactly. Presbyterian. Yeah. Why is anemia? Okay, so um, uh, We are also in a region where you have a lot of infectious disease like uh, malaria. There you go. And then you have malaria sucking the, and the blood, exactly. the life out of you. Exactly. So all <laughs> that All that all that contributes to, to that. Well, I got this for iron because okay. I not because I felt like I was anemic but at home, I cook out of two big giant cast iron skillets. Okay. And so part of our tradition of getting iron into the system is if you cook in those things, then it automatically gets in the food. And so okay. you have it. So I felt like I was dragging and draining and I saw this and then in reading it, in fact, it says on the package, the woman that created this was because she almost died of anemia. She's one of the co-founders of this particular product. And I thought, you know what? We can grind our own turkey berries and our own ginger and also have that as part of what we offer too. Yeah, but I loved her her, 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 um, her story right. and I actually wrote down the number. I said, I want to call her right. and talk to her because it was very, 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 very inspiring. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you see that um, Dr. Michael, you like Dr. Michael or you like Dr. Tete? Um, what you like? Um, in, in my workplace, I'm known for Dr. Tete. You want me to call so Dr. Tete? Yes, that would be okay. You know, Ghanaians are so polite. They don't correct you. They let you call them these names. Don't say nothing. Okay, so with Dr. Tete, and I just feel like it's that, that name, that I, I just, ooh, so. Because <laughs> you got to punch it. You got to go on and say it. Okay, so I wanted, um, I wanted someone with some energy and some insight, but I also didn't want someone that would, would, would be anti- um, traditional medicine, and so you also have experience yeah. with standard medicine. Share some of that with us. So yes, so as part of our training, we train in both sides, but must start mm -hmm. the hips. Okay. So even in my work, I have experience with um, Western or Orthodox medicine. Yeah, that's what you. That's the term you use. Orthodox. Orthodox. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the reason being because not to be prescribing it, but to be able to identify interactions. Sometimes you have drug drug interactions and all that. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor, knowing it's at best you also know that side. Mm -hmm. So that even if you are giving your herbs to your patient and your patients might be taking any other drug, you'd be able to inform or educate them very well to avoid any interaction. Now this is my training, um, or my rather my understanding that it's best not to mix herbs and pharmaceuticals because of what you're describing? Um, ideally, that is it. Okay. But um, it's not all herbs that have such interactions. Okay. And in here, in our training too, we also look at the metabolism of the two drugs. So that if you are taking a orthodox medicine, we don't advise that you take the herbal medicine immediately after. Oh, so you give yourself some time, some time to digest it. Exactly. Okay. So depending on which drug you are taking, 
and then um, it's um, half life within the body, I mean the metabolism process within the body. Okay. That would inform. But you have a lot of other medicines that also helps a lot, mm -hmm. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So um, me being an expert in the two sides, um, it, it really helps compared it, to someone it who sure doesn't. It sure does, because you just said something, now you just taught me something that I really have yet to hear, which is that there are some of them that, that go hand in hand, that they actually don't hurt each other, but oh, so do you have an example of one? Um, for example, um, I think the turkey berries. Okay. We have people taking turkey berries at the same time. They are also taking um, totima. Totima is one of um, the powerful um, uh, hematinics used in Western medicine okay. or Orthodox medicine. Okay. Are uh, people taking turkey berries and totima at the same time have an increase in their um, blood, like the the blood level shoots up. Easily, oh, faster, faster. than mm -hmm. taking Totima by itself. Um, okay, exactly. I got you. So, I got you. in that case, someone taking the two wouldn't really have any because um, they really do, counter, they really serve the same, the same purpose. purpose. Okay, now, what's what, what are two herbs? What is an herb and a pharmaceutical that crash that that you, you do you when you think to people, I don't want you to mix these? Okay, so, um, if you have. Uh, products like uh, an antiplatelet would like warfarin. Okay. And then you are also taking uh, garlic. Warfarin? Yes, warfarin. Oh, warfarin. Warfarin. Okay, warfarin. And yes. then you're also taking garlic. garlic. What's, the, what's the problem? Warfarin is antiplatelet, that is, it stains the blood. Oh. So it avoids, like, it stains the blood. So you're not. And garlic also does virtually the same thing. So you're gonna bleed out. Exactly. So oh, when it's too you have thin. a cut, you mm -hmm. are just going to bleed. Yeah, it's too thin. Exactly. So okay. in that case, any herbal product that contains garlic, that contains ginger, if a patient is already on warfarin because of maybe a heart condition, mm -hmm. you then don't advise the patient to take that herbal product. Okay. Because in here you have quite a number of herbal product being a mixture of different herbs. Okay. So, oh wow, that's exciting to know. Exactly. That's exciting to know. Okay, let me ask you this because this is an issue for our good doctor Lassay that's over organizing this wonderful health fair. Arthritis. I, you know, I see you all. Africans do a lot of squatting, a lot of bending. Uh, I see it with Asians too, where you can sit in squats. You can you can do that. And so for us Westerners, everything is sort of you know up. Yeah, it's like an L. Okay. And I don't hear a lot of complaints about, and I don't even when I see old folks' hands, I don't see the enlarged knuckles. Yeah, and yeah. so, what what are you all doing? That I know you don't do a lot of dairy, or really virtually no dairy. Okay, so what are you doing that keeps you from getting arthritis? Okay, um, I, I think averagely, <laughs> averagely, I don't know, but averagely, there is quite a number of people who also have that. Okay, they do. But okay. yes, there's quite a number of people. But um, what I would say the difference being that, um, you know, with osteoarthritis, and it has to do more with aging. Okay. And the more your joints are in um, motion, you have a reduction in arthritis. Oh, so the doctor is telling us we're not moving, we're lazy. Is that what you're trying to say, doctor? <laughs> Nicely, <laughs> but um, yeah. so you you then have people who do a lot of exercising. Okay. Not really having arthritis, suffering from that. I got you. Then the second thing also has to do with um, people that also um, uh, taking a lot of um, uh, alcohol. Later, alcohol. Yeah, later. That's later in the in life. Really? Mm -hmm. I would have I was confident about the dairy because of the buildup of mucus and that type of thing. Exactly. Protein. But you're telling me that so excessive so, alcohol drinking can lead to arthritis? That is later in life. They all have their role they play. Ooh. Aside the diary, um also people if you do a lot of meat, 
Oh, where you have gouty arthritis. That's arthritis in smaller bones. So that if you have high protein, okay. that is animal protein, mm -hmm. in their digestion, you have a lot of um, uric acid being produced. Okay. Which then gets into the smaller joints. Oh, and wow. that is what brings about this. So um, that's what gout is. Exactly. Is that what gout is? Exactly. Oh wow. So people who we eat have a lot, lot of, of gout, meat. Yes, yeah. are advised to stay away from um, um, fruit, um, meat. Okay, is it reversible? So let's say I'm sitting here now with gout, and you've come to me and you say. Okay, Dr. Wanda, I need you to stay away from the meat. I need you to lower that. All right. Can I reverse the gout? Because Americans want to know, look, can we fix this stuff? Yes. So, um, help. yes. So, staying away from meat would help. Okay. Because for a long time, so rather than doing meat, rather do um, um, protein from plant source. Okay, now do we... Uric acid is actually more from protein from animal source. Okay, so we don't have to go full vegan. Exactly. But we need to lower... Now, when you say meat, you're talking about cow, pig, goat, or you... Exactly. Do, or you but we can can we still mess with the fish? With fi fish is okay. But it's, it's this other land animal. Exactly. Okay. They have quite high um, um, uric acid in its process. Mm. Uh, metabolism. So staying away from it will help reduce the. You gout heard that, Doctor Lose? Yes. You got to lower that meat. You yes. got to lower. You don't have to go vegan, but you got to lower that meat. Mm. So, yes, that's that's one of the ways to help with that. Aside, also um, exercising or getting the joints. That is arthritis of the knee, arthritis of on your elbows, mm -hmm. your wrist. Which those ones have to do more with um, motion. Motion, yes. Because okay. the more you are moving your joints, the more you would um, enhance your synovial fluids. When mm. I talk of synovial fluids, they are the fluids that lubricate your joints. So when you're not moving, it's it's like you you become a tin man. You kind of dry out from exactly. So the inside of you dries out. Exactly. Wow. So that also brings about degeneration of um, the joints. Now, what herbs can I take this. to lubricate that? I mean, is there any type of food I can take in? Let's say that that's an issue. Okay. Is there a way that I can if I can eat that gets lubrication that adds to the movement? Yes. Um, um, taking in yes, taking in plants, products, or herbs that have um anti-inflammatory activities like um uh, i got them on the rope shawl i got <laughs> i got them on the rope shawl i'll get it i'll get it <laughs> <laughs> i'll get some but um down here it's it's one of the things that um people also use capsaicin okay. that is um pepper uh, oh, is that why y'all eat so many peppers um no uh, in this case you don't eat Oh, in this case, you would uh, um, maybe you, after grinding it, you can add it to a shea butter or um, an ointment where you apply it. Okay, on now the joints. I I use ginger oil. Okay, okay. So, for the same kind of exactly, and I can feel. Ooh, I can Sorry. feel. Um, I can feel the circulation. I can feel that it's lubricating that area. Mm. Okay. I'm fighting with my camera, y'all. <laughs> okay. I can and, 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 and I can feel the circulation. I can feel that it's opening things up, that it's lubricating the area. If you saw if you all saw all the stuff we stack in here, you would laugh. But we're making it happen. Yeah, I can feel that it's doing that. So that's smart. Yeah. Okay, so you said peppers. So that's that means because this this is a country with several different peppers. Alligator pepper, negro pepper, what's another pepper? Um, cayenne pepper. Yeah. So actually I'm talking about the cayenne pepper. He's talking about the cayenne, you're talking yes. about real heat. Exactly. Yeah, real cayenne pepper. Do you suggest to, that to put a little bit of cayenne with the ginger or does the ginger work fine by itself? Oh, the ginger in itself um, works. That's okay. the ginger oil. Right. Yes, not the, the raw, when you use the raw ginger, 
it will actually burn your skin mm. so an extract let's say the oil mm -hmm. is cool or if with the cayenne pepper if you have it blended and then you prepare a decoction of it mm -hmm. evaporate it a while for some time so when you have up to um, getting in between being a paste you can then mix it with um, um, if you are here you can mix it with shea butter this is so amazing so this is how the various muscle creams are when they talking about capsin that's what they're talking about exactly. and so you're balancing now how much of that heat is in there and so I see that also in um, some of your other products, like Mommy Damia. Um, yes. So that's why that, that product sells so well exactly. here. Wow. So, yeah, Ghana, the garden of And then baby. also, um, with arthritis too, uh, one research I've actually also come across mm -hmm. is people in Asia um, actually don't really also suffer from um, arthritis that much. I noticed that. Compared to Africa, Europe, uh -huh. and the Americas. America, we saw. So I realized mm -hmm. in researching that they actually have don't really taken a lot of peppery stuffs. What do they do? I am I'm, I'm yet to know, but I just realized they don't really take in a lot of peppery stuffs. Okay. And that makes their bone quite flexible. I'm yet to do more steady okay we that. need we need to support the doctor in this yes. research because we need to know yes. what, what it is that they're do doing because that we are not mm -hmm. we are not doing to reduce arthritis osteoarthritis but until he it. learns we know for sure that we can help ourselves with the peppers yes. in particular cayenne pepper yes. and also some good old-fashioned ginger oil there are there are more there are more out maybe in, a, in, a, in another time would we can share on that what else do i want to ask you doctor as we wind up what do i want to know um you've been doing this 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 herbal work and doing outreach what are some of the challenges that you run into that you think um you feel like the herbs are maybe was a limitation like maybe you, you, you saw a particular pathology in a person and you thought, you know what, I this isn't going to work. Okay, so um, generally, um, herbal medicines are good for chronic conditions. Okay. When you have an emergency situation, in any emergency situation, at that point in time, you want to save the person's life. Okay. So in that state, you then have to refer the person to orthodox so that when the person is stabilized we come in with herbal medicine the reason being that being because in africa here we haven't um, reformed or developed our traditional medicine mm -hmm. if you go to china traditional chinese medicine has been developed to the extent that even in emergencies they can use them mm -hmm. but in africa here we haven't gotten to that stage yeah, yeah so i see that you, i've even seen them use their acupuncture Exactly. For surgery. Exactly. Yeah. They perform yeah. and do all that. So um, for Africa here, we, we haven't gotten to that. We've not really done much studies mm -hmm. into into those areas. So if you go for maybe we go for an outreach and then you have somebody presenting with a pressure of let's say 200, 100, at that instant, even the herbal medicine at that instant mm -hmm. wouldn't really be advised someone. Mm -hmm. They're going to die. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we then have to give i mean the orthodox to stabilize mm -hmm. before if um as the patient continues we continue mm -hmm. with the help so that's the limitation we are having in here we've not developed our medicine our, medic our traditional medicine so much to handle emergency well i appreciate you sharing situations. that because one of the things one of the fears when i first was um beginning to prepare to reach out to you is that mm -hmm. oh nobody wants to get the you know the quack herbalist doctor that <laughs> believes even in the midst of a heart attack or whatever they're still just going to keep giving you herbs so you have a lot of balance in you you recognize that like if we really in a crisis we might have to use traditional or slash orthodox That's medicine nice. but that because there will still be some uh, chronic exactly. issues that so that then yeah. you, you use the herbal to manage to stabilize 
What do you suggest for breasts? For breasts? If you have, uh, if you have cysts, if you have, if you if beginning to see the potential for cancer, wh wh what do you suggest? Um, we we have anti-cancer plants, like? herbs. Um, I know one. Uh, I hope you say it. At this point, yes. <laughs> um, you know the one. <laughs> Starts with an S. <laughs> soursop? You don't believe in soursop? Which one? Soursop. Soursop. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, 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 yes. I yes. actually have heard the soursop and bitter leaf. Bitter leaf. That that helps okay. a lot. For soursop, yes, I know. It is actually well researched as having anti cancer. So that's that's in itself very good okay. for, for it. And then also, um, we have a plant, ah, it, it's called, uh, it's the source of this from a scalp product, Green Christian. I've forgotten the, the name. I'm okay. Try to recall. Don't, don't kill yourself, it's going to come <laughs> to you. And but Sarsop generally is, has anti cancer properties okay it's known for that so it's better to have it already built up in the diet or it, it works just effectively if you're already sick if you're sick oh in in, in any way okay Do preventive you, and also heals and what about that beautiful 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 neem tree what do y'all do with neem okay with neem tree neem tree has a lot of activities okay or a lot of um medicinal properties in Africa here, yeah, the one that is well known is it has anti-malaria properties. Okay, you like it more for malaria. Exactly. Okay. But in other parts too, others use it for various things, for hypertension, some use it for um, diabetes. Okay. And all that. And then um, recently to um, they are reforming it to also build the immune system okay. as an immune modulator. Okay. So um, in here, it's one of the things that they also do. To modulate um, the immune system. Okay. And it's nasty. It's me nasty. Why? It just tastes bitter. That is true. But but in that it's way, effective. Exactly. It's power. Yes. yes. Yeah. There is this thought that the more um, herbs taste bitter, the more they're powerful. That is the truth. That and, is one. And, and one. us in the West, we make everything sweet. Ah. Everything. <laughs> Sir, the syrup. The the, the even the, the the coating outside of your peel mm -hmm. sweet and we're suffering for it we're suffering for it That's what i what i've made a practice of doing we do i do do your bitter leaf okay uh mixed in with sometimes my husband will mix it in with stew we okay. eat it yeah that, that's um, very good that's but very then good. i also have done it as the juice we do juices and i take a couple of shots a day okay. um but um, i also do the neem water um where i just take some some ground neem i put it in the water sometimes even the leaves and i'll just drink the water That's when i feel right. sort of just like i need to be um detoxed i need to be cleaned out um so i have you know i have some mad respect for many of the things that are anti-cancer but mm -hmm. what i'm learning is that the cancer is our we all have cancer cells in us and that there's a possibility through life and environment that we can activate them um, okay. Do you you believe in that philosophy or no? No. You, oh, so you think some of us are walking around here? We ain't got nothing. Yes. <laughs> so okay. because if you, if you look at the pathology of how cancer develops, okay, it's 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 not that we all have it. Okay. But um, our cells are always replicating. Ah. Okay. So when you talk of cancer, that is to mean that maybe the rate at which a cell is replicating, it's it exceeds that rate. So it's going, it's, 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 it's being rogue. It's going too fast. Too fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, um, so that is a tumor. Okay. That in itself is a tumor. So you see a tumor is cancerous. If it then affects its, it affects the surroundings. Oh, I got the you. System. Okay. Because you can have a tumor which doesn't really Bother anything. Have, exactly. Mm, it just sits there and looks ugly. Exactly. It takes up space. Adenomas, mm -hmm. they are tumors. Yeah. So when they begin to um, uh, affect the body's cells, mm -hmm. begin to um, 
eat up your blood as in cause anemia affects heads mm. around this then mm -hmm. you see that's it's cancerous I guess. exactly so and there are a lot of things that exposes one to that yeah. yeah so it's not like everyone i don't believe everyone has it but if you are in a condition where you're exposed to things that causes cancer mm. or that causes tumor i got you then you are more likely to develop cancers well um dr Tete. You have given us a whole meal to chew on, and we still need you to come back because we need our drink, we need our dessert, That's we true. need our we need. We, we. <laughs> so this is the wonderful doctor that's joining us for um, our health fair. Our projected date is June. Um, in that time, we'll be looking at different recipes and things that we can leave in those communities or demonstrate in those communities because I like demos. I like when you go and you get a team of people that show people how to do it too, so that after there, there have been some assessment of the issues, the problems, that we actually can empower them. When the doctor came, I'm going to say this and we're going to close out. I shared with him this product that my husband has been taking. He brought to me. I have shared this with um, Dr. Lassay. It's from Mom Pom Herbal, and pronounce this word for me. Nibima. Nibima. And so what it traditionally is used for is malaria. But there was a video with the medical team yeah. that my husband shared with me, and it actually can be used for hepatitis. Mm -hmm. um, I think I can share a little on that. Okay, let's hear because it. Because I've um, and, 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 and I've also worked as a researcher in, in one of the biggest universities, that's Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. And um, this product has a plant called Cryptolepis sanguinolenta. That's Cryptolepis. And uh, a team of researchers headed by a clinical pathologist in uh, this medical school at KNUST came up to um, research on it against um, hepatitis B virus. And the research came out that this medicinal product, which is traditionally used for uh, malaria, was able to kill or destroy, kill about 99% of hepatitis B virus mm. and the study was compared with tenoviver which is um, one of the first line um, hepatitis B medications for hepatitis B and C and it came out that um, this product actually did much more reduction or um, kills much of the virus compared with tenoviver which is a standard drug Mm -hmm. which is currently used in Ghana. So as it starts now, the team of researchers are still forwarding to look for grants to go into clinical studies mm -hmm. of the decoction of um, Nibima for, for it. So uh, we are hoping that the clinical studies would also come out positive and um, we would be able to get something good out of it. And uh, what actually the medicinal products or constituent in the plant is called cryptolepin and cryptolepin it's one of the things we are actually advocating for is that cryptolepin should be developed as the next anti-malaria drug since we had quinine from um, china or traditional chinese medicine of which we have artemisinin chloroquine and all that and over the years there has been resistance so there are advocates to also develop cryptolepin as the next um, anti-malaria for Africa. We're going to do our best yeah. to mm -hmm. highlight this and allow this particular uh, solution, okay, as well as, you know, as preventative and helping with malaria. It's, it's got more, multiple purposes to be at this health fair. And let's get some attention drawn to it. Um, let's do that. Sure. Okay. There are some other pieces to it, which is this particular tonic that helps with anemia. And then, oh, I hope our stuff don't move. Okay. And then we have another one that helps with uh, arthritis. And so what they were saying is the combo is even better. Um, the price of this all together is reasonable. Um, it worked out to be about 45 CDs which is about seven dollars and fifty cents about eight dollars we can have the whole set so we're hoping to provide this at 
the health fair. Yeah, and we got a nice stamp of approval. Um, so I think we're making a good decision, it's along good. with other things, other stuff that we would like to add, okay? I'm signing off. I hope you enjoy this session. I intend on inviting the doctor back. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. I, I'm looking forward to your comments and uh, feedback. Is there anything you'd like to say before I close out? Okay. Um, the last thing I would like to say is um, uh, herbs are good. And um, in our health, we should always try to use I believe in using diet to cure or heal or prevent diseases. So anytime we have opportunity to cook, to eat, let's think of our health, mm -hmm. let's eat being wise with our health. That's um, being health conscious, even in the little things that we eat. Mm -hmm. So we eat right to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And to the health fair too, I'm looking forward to Yay. be part of the team to impact um, the people of Lolonia. Yes. And I'm trusting that quite a number of people will um, have a reformation to avoid or prevent hypertension, diabetes, stroke, and all other um, chronic conditions. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, signing out.